Welcome back to 3D Distribute, everybody. We're back here in the shop. Say hello to the internet, Shane. What's up, guys? Hi, How y'all doing? Hello, everybody. <laughs> Alright, man, what do we got going on today? Okay, We're going to so show everybody. We have our Canivo keypads on. Everything looks great. Uh, it did come to our attention that we need to uh, actually upgrade our our heated bed to cast aluminum uh, to prevent warping. Uh, we usually use cast aluminum on all of our other units. Uh, we went with a different supplier this time and I kind of screwed up and someone pointed out that I actually got extruded aluminum. Uh, extruded aluminum is great but for a heating environment uh, it's going to warp over time so we need something that's more dimensional stable. Okay, uh, so. These are our heat pads right here. Everything looks good. Uh, so the way this is going to work, we found this ceramic fiber. Okay, so this is a roll of ceramic fiber. This is the same stuff that's used in like ovens and kilns and all kinds of uh, very hot environments. So and your, your propane work. furnaces or forges. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, so the way this is going to work is we unroll this. We're going to cut. We're going to cut enough off, a good nice little chunk, it's going to fit right in here, okay? So this is, it's going to be an insulated barrier from the heat pads, and it's going to be reinforced with a steel heat guard. So this is going to go right here, and then we'll have our actual base of the printer. If we can set this all up here without breaking anything. Hooray. So I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I've never used ceramic fiber before and uh, it looks like the stuff that we actually need. Um, if anybody out there has got any ideas for a better base, let me know. I need something that's strong, um, something that's strong and heat resistant. This heat barrier, definitely, definitely going to do the trick, but if anybody's got something that's more effective, let There's us know. Always room for improvement. Yes, yes, always. So I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, we also got a few other projects going on. Uh, we're still working on our Workhorse XL. Now, this thing is gonna be huge. This is gonna be a really big printer. This is 650 millimeter by 650 by 650. So, so he, here's, here's the printer and we'll do a size comparison. There's Bruce, there's the printer. So there's Bruce, there's the printer. Now there's a lot of y'all that think our printer is already huge, okay? Uh, the typical workhorse has a 650 by 350 by 350 millimeter build area, okay? So the, the regular workhorse is pretty huge, okay? Now the next one is 650 by 650 by 650, okay? So let me let me show you exactly how big this is, okay? This is gonna be fun. This is yeah, this is gonna be very fun. Alright, I got this in. I, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Watch out, Bruce. So, so this printer you could actually 3D print a workhorse, okay? Now right now the workhorse is looking pretty tiny. Uh, let me show you how big the regular workhorse is. So, this is our broken down maker bot that seems to stay broken down. This is what we're looking at. Maker bot, workhorse, workhorse XL. Exactly, exactly. Look at this build area. I love the maker bot. I love it. It's a repeatable machine. You know, it's consistent. It does what it does. Uh, I love the MakerBot, it's been fun. I love you guys, MakerBot, but the workhorse, we you could 3D print a MakerBot. Well, I mean, if you could print with metal, which one day soon, I hope, right? Yeah. yeah. We've all, we're all fingers crossing for that one. And now with the workhorse XL, you could 3D print a workhorse, but 3D print a MakerBot. <laughs> so you could 3D print a 3D printer that will 3D print a 3D printer. That was a lot of 3D printers in that sentence. That is Shane. a lot of 3D printers. I may have added an extra one, but that brings us to our well, next Well, it is, it is additive manufacturing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else have we got going on out here? All right, so a couple other things we're doing is we have a machine and parts for 
more workhorses. Uh, we we machined some motor mounts. These are Z-axis motor mounts. Um, they're pretty beefy. Uh, it's supporting a lot of weight. The gantry is pretty heavy, so uh, they, they're made to support a lot of weight. Uh, this is the left Z-axis motor mount, and this one is the right Z-axis motor mount. Now these are just freshly machined, so they haven't been polished or anything. There's uh, there's a post-processing um, process to it, so it'll be cleaned up and polished and look a lot better. And um, so these are the Z-axis uh, motor mounts. Let's see, we just machined some of the exterior. So these are the exterior panels. So you'll have something that goes across right here, and then you'll have the exterior to the side. So this is the exterior. Uh, we got a few projects going on. Um, hopefully we'll be getting the new Delta. Well, I can't really say new Delta. This is a uh, Delta 3 printer that my buddy Greg designed from TXRX Labs. And uh, we started building one a long time ago and actually brought it back out. And uh, hopefully we'll be finishing that soon. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, this is a pretty nice machine. This is the This is the effector right here for the printer. Uh, this is actually IGIS rod ends. So let's see how this works. I'm pretty excited about this. It's, it's actually pretty light. I mean, even though you have some aluminum components right here, it's pretty light. So you're talking about really strong rod ends. Uh, it's got self-lubricated, um, it's got self-lubricated spherical bearings in here. So it works pretty good, pretty accurate. Here, uh, hold that still for a second. I'm gonna give you a nice, good view of that. If you'll focus, focus. Okay, it doesn't want to focus. There we go. Hey, give you a nice, good view of those right there. You move around a little bit. There you go. Motion on this is pretty good. Uh, my buddy Greg did an awesome design. So we're bringing this back out. We're actually going to finish this. We actually built this frame like three years ago. And it's been kind of sitting in the back room because we've had other projects um, like, like the workhorse and other stuff too. So uh, now we actually have some time now. We're actually going to finish this up. And can't wait to see how this thing prints. We actually already built one before, but uh, we're building another one. Uh, we also have... The chocolate extruder we're still working on. Um, not really just a chocolate extruder, this is more of a, uh, we were, we were going to call it the experimental extruder, then MakerBot came out with a extruder that they called the experimental extruder, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to brand it out, brand it's, it with a different name. At least a different experiment, very, yeah. very different experiment. <laughs> but we'll call it the multi-extruder. But. Um, so we'll, we'll call it something. Give us, give us yeah. some, something good and catchy, Internet. So we're looking at printing like chocolate, clay, different types of resins, stuff like that. We'll see how it goes. Um, and we're still working on the CNC spindle. So pretty soon with the workhorse printer, not only will you be able to 3D print, but you'll be able to print in chocolate, print in clay, and you'll be able to come down with CNC spindle and actually clean everything up. So we can't wait to see how that goes. You know, when you have a lead screw driven 3D printer, you kind of got to think of uh, other applications outside of just FDM 3D printing. FDM 3D printing is pretty fun, but uh, I mean, you want to utilize the machine to its maximum capacity, okay? Uh, this ain't normal lead screw, it's fast, but it's also rigid at the same time, so. We want to see what it can do, so hopefully, hopefully we'll have some cool stuff with the CNC spindle. And I think that's it, man. Is that all the fancy stuff we got going on in here today? We also got we got a few projects we're working on. Uh, we got a really big top secret project, really big. Um, it's kind of predatory right now. We have a Core XY we're coming out with. Um, I'd love to show it to you, but it's also top secret. Um, also a little bit incomplete right now. 
And hopefully for MRF 2019, we'll be showing up with our workhorse printer, our Cooler XY, and also the briefcase 3D printer. We got a really neat design for a very low profile briefcase 3D printer that's something, something on, something similar to the motion system of a Perusia. So can't wait to see how that turns out. Hopefully we'll finish that up. We got, we got five weeks before, now actually we got seven, we got seven weeks before the Murph 2019. So uh, we got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I wish we could bring the Workhorse XL for you printed the Murph 2019, but um, we had enough uh, adventure getting the regular Workhorse there last year. Yeah, that was uh, interesting and not a little bit complicated. Yeah, you can only fit so much 3D printer in a car. Very, very much the case. Especially with everything else that you you need to drive halfway across the country, and that printer. Well, let's put it this way. We built this room specifically with double doors. You can see right here behind Shane. We put these double doors in here specifically because of this printer. Because uh, it'd be kind of dumb. Let's, let's build this, this giant printer. This oh, we can't get it out the door. Great thought process, guys. But yeah. We, we would have actually built this printer a long time ago. But there was two problems. One problem, there was no room in the garage for this big 3D printer. In the shop. Yes, in the shop. Uh, second problem, we could have built it in the house, but if we wanted to take the printer out of the house, this printer would not fit through this doorway. So we've actually, I think one of the main influences on the 3D printer room that we built was actually having space for this, other workhorse printers. And actually be able to get it out. Now, what's up? I didn't mean to distract you. I was uh, just pointing at that to remind you. The sticker. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to. I, I distracted you. Yeah. He, he told me. He told me he wanted to, me to get this in the video because he wanted to mention these guys. Oh yeah. Uh, our buddy Jay from Microtrends. Uh, check him out. He's got his own little project here. And he's got an awesome, nice little printer. Uh, it's really small, compact, and it looks like a solid printer. So I can't wait to see how this turns out. Little random shout out there. Yes, Jay at Microtrends. Check him out. All right. Well, what else we got out here today, Shane? I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it, man. Well, thank you, everybody on the internet. If you're still watching this long into the video, we appreciate it. Come out and see us at. Uh, Murph, we'll be happy to, happy to see everybody out there. Good luck. Keep making shit. Have fun. Peace. Tell them bye, Shane. And, and you too, Bruce. Tell everybody bye, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Uh, he's, he's, there he goes. <laughs> bye, everybody.